Hello everyone, welcome back to Dive into C11. I hope you had a good Christmas and a good New Year's Eve. So today we're gonna talk about one of the most uh, useful new C11 standard library features, which is uh, uh, smart pointers. And uh, we're gonna learn uh, what smart pointers are and what problem they solve, how to deal with ownership transfer when we're talking about uh, uh, resources allocated on the heap and the difference between unique and shared smart pointers. I highly recommend watching part 3 of Dive into C11 be before watching this video because I'm gonna talk about concepts I've treated in the previous video. So let's dive in. So as I explained in part 3, we must be careful when dealing with pointers that store addresses of objects allocated on the free store. For example, if we store an int variable on the free store with the new keyword, we we must uh, delete it afterwards with the delete keyword. And if we, we forget to do so, for example, in this memory leak uh, int variable, at the end of the scope, uh, it won't be automatically deleted, so we will have a memory leak. And basically, the memory we allocated for this uh, memory leak uh, uh, int instance will never be freed and uh, this can be a very big problem especially if you're constantly creating new ob new objects for example in games uh, because sooner or later the the application will run out, will run out of memory and uh, anything can happen and also there can be security issues so you should always be careful when dealing with uh, free store allocated objects and you should always remember to delete them after uh, the creation so you may be wondering, uh, as if you remember the previous video, uh, I talked about uh, when uh, after leaving the scope, an object automatically called this calls its destructor. So we could basically create a class that uh, wraps a pointer that points to something allocated on the free store, and automatically delete it uh, in the in the destructor. So basically, we create a class that I call freeStoreInt, which is uh, a very, which has a very naive implementation, but uh, uh, it should be simple enough to understand what what it does. Basically, it uh, it contains a pointer to something allocated on the free store, In this case, an int. Uh, we construct the class by passing a pointer to the allocated object. And the destructor of the class, which will be called when the class is uh, uh, is out of scope, will call delete on the pointer that points to something allocated on the free store. Uh, we also added a simple getter function that allows us to get uh, the internal pointer. So if we, we need to access the the int that is allocated inside the free store, we can simply use the get function. So this class has a big advantage instead of a simple pointer because it prevents memory leak bugs. Since uh, the destructor calls delete on the pointer that points to something allocated on the free store, we will be sure that when it goes out of scope, the memory will be freed and we uh, won't have any kind of memory leak. So let's try the new class out. We construct an instance of free store int by passing a new int with value 10 in the constructor. The new keyword allocates uh, an int variable on the free store with value 10, and uh, basically this is a pointer, and it's gonna be passed here, so that pointer becomes the pointer we passed in the constructor. Now test is allocated and it was constructed, and we do not have to call delete even if we called new, because when test goes out of scope, basically here, the destructor will automatically be called and uh, uh, the memory we allocated will, will be freed for us. So as you can see, we can uh, treat uh, something allocated on the free store as if it was something allocated on the stack, which is very convenient and helps us avoid bugs. However, the implementation of our free store int has several problems. Uh, the most obvious one is that it's not generic, it only accepts int values and uh, this can be easily fixed with templates. 
Also, what uh, happens if we try to copy our class? What if we try to move it? It's, uh, it's difficult because if we copy our class, uh, we might ac accidentally call delete twice on the pointer and causing uh, memory corruption. So it also would need uh, operator overloads uh, for assignment and etc. It's, it's a very naive implementation and has a lot of problems. Also, another problem may be storing it uh, into a container because uh, the container internally may copy or move the class uh, and uh, that will probably cause uh, memory errors. So it turns out uh, our life-changing class uh, is actually horrible because uh, it's very problematic. But uh, fortunately, the C++11 standard libraries introduced a, a new class which is std unique pointer that basically solves the problem we were trying to solve with freestoreint. Unique pointer is a smart pointer and all the smart pointers are in the memory header file so we may we need to make sure to include memory in our program. And uh, let's start by analyzing the simple smart pointer which is unique pointer. As I said earlier it's basically tries to solve the problem we were trying to solve with our freestoreint class but it is a uh, uh, much more uh, functional it's uh, clever and doesn't uh, cause memory issues on construction it allocates and constructs an object with the uh, user specified parameters so we need to, uh, to pass uh, uh, an object allocated on the free store for example a new int with value 10 as you can see it is a templatized class so we need to specify what type the unique pointer is storing in this case it is an int and uh, just like our free store int, when the when the when test goes out of scope, it it will automatically deal with memory deletion, and it will free the memory we allocated for the int. Also, uh, the most important thing is that uh, unique pointer solves all the issues that we listed above. So basically, it is generic. We can use it with any class. We cannot copy it, but if we move it, ownership of the free store allocated object is automatically moved to the new uh, unique pointer. Also, uh, we can uh, store unique pointers in containers. So for example, we can safely have a vector of unique pointers, and that's uh, awesome because it allows us to, to write very simple and convenient code. So here's another example. Here I allocate a double a string and a char using unique pointer and I give them some parameters in the constructor and it is uh, completely guaranteed that when the, these instances of a unique pointer go out of scope basically here the memory will be freed so there basically is no reason to use row pointers when uh, we need to allocate something on the free store that has uh, uh, an unique ownership so that it's uh, uh, very clear who own, owns the resource allocated on the free store. So you may be thinking, that's great, I won't need the row pointers anymore. But uh, that's wrong, because row pointers are still very useful, uh, since they can help us uh, uh, not to refer to ownership of an object, but instead refer to a specific instance of an object without representing ownership. Basically, when you need to store something on the free store, and uh, by that I mean allocate memory for something on the free store you need to use a smart pointer because that's the only way um, the standard guarantees that the memory will be freed and uh, we won't have memory leaks so basically when your pointer needs to own the, mom the memory you need to use a smart pointer otherwise when you just need to refer to something if it's on the stack or on the free store without representing ownership so basically this pointer does not own the object you just uh, use a row pointer here are some examples so here we have a variable called runtime size of type size t which if you remember is the standard type for sizes of value 10 uh, and this is not a compile time constant so if we want to allocate an array on the with with the, th with the size of runtime size we need to use the free store since uh, we need to allocate something on the free store the first thing that comes to mind is smart pointer because we need a pointer to own the array we need memory on the free store so we allocate a unique pointer that stores an int array and uh, we allocate the array with new int 
and runtime sides. So maybe in the future we need to simply refer to this array that we allocated without owning it. So if we need to refer to array for example in a function or maybe we just need an alias that changes that changes its pointy during the program execution, we should use a row pointer because we do not have to own the memory of array. We just need to refer to array. So to get a pointer from the unique pointer, we use the get function like we did uh, with your free store int class. And uh, we uh, basically, I, I created an instance here called pointer to array, which is the uh, row pointer to the memory allocated inside of array. So this pointer that I'm getting here is not uh, owning memory, it is a row pointer. The type uh, is something like uh, array of int pointer. I use auto because it's cleaner and it uh, helps me avoid mistakes. And uh, if pointer, uh, pointer to array goes out of scope, array won't be deleted, but if array goes out of scope, the memory will be deleted. So basically if we had to pass uh, a parameter, uh, an array parameter to a function and we wanted to pass array, we would use a row pointer because we don't want to, to transfer our ownership. Instead, if we if we have to allocate like we did here with uh, the runtime sites and the new int, we need to use a unique pointer to make sure the memory will be deleted. It may seem a little overwhelming at first, but uh, the only thing you have to do is ask yourself, do I need to own this object? If you do, then you will use a smart pointer. If you don't need to own the object, but you want to refer to it, you just use a row pointer. And this is another simple example. Uh, basically, we allocate a string on the stack, not on the free store. As you can see, there, there is no pointer here. And maybe we need to refer to this string without owning it. So we just uh, create a row pointer, a uh, pointer to string here, and uh, initialize it with the address of test string. When this goes out of scope, the string won't be deleted, also because it is allocated on the stack and not on the free store. So it's a useful way to refer to the string without owning the memory allocated for the string itself. Also another very important thing is that unique pointer does not have any kind of performance uh, overhead compared to raw pointers, so feel free to use it wherever you would use a simple uh, pointer that calls new and then delete. There's basically no reason to use uh, uh, single ownership pointers uh, uh, with row, new and delete anymore. So let's move on to the next part where we take a look at uh, ownership issues and uh, how to transfer ownership between smart pointers. Okay, uh, to make the examples more clear, I define a simple class that I call resource here. It's an empty class, it basically does nothing. Um, and uh, we, we, I called it resource because uh, it could represent uh, a texture, a sound file, so something that uh, needs uh, to be owned and then deleted when it's not uh, needed anymore. So uh, these are some functions that do nothing, but uh, um, they are used in my examples to explain how to use uh, ownership and how to transfer it. Basically, we have a function that takes uh, by value a uh, std unique pointer to resource. As you can see, there is no reference here, so it is a copy. It takes a copy of a unique pointer. Also, we have a function that takes a unique pointer by constant reference. And also, we have a function that takes a resource by row pointer, so there is no smart pointer here. Alright, so now we have a, a function called what should I pass by to maintain original ownership. And the name of the function explains what's gonna happen in the example. So let's say we have this situation where after we acquire a resource we need to refer to its pointer maintaining ownership to the smart pointer that acquired the resource. So we acquire the resource here by creating a new unique pointer to resource and uh, creating a new resource. So at at the moment, Resputter is the owner of the resource. And if we try to pass uh, the unique pointer by value to pass by value, like in this commented line, we will get a compile time error because we cannot copy unique pointer. 
uh, otherwise we'll have uh, uh, two pointers that uh, own the same resource so this is invalid, we cannot do this the reason we can choose pass by value is that uh, a CD unique pointer cannot be copied because otherwise we would have uh, two uh, unique pointer instances which own the same free store allocated object and it makes no sense because unique pointer should be the unique owner of the resource. There is no shared ownership. If we try to pass by const ref, the following code is fine and I personally use this solution. Basically we pass res pointer here and uh, it is uh, a constant reference in the fu in the function arguments so we explicitly uh, represented the intent of not messing with the ownership but we just want to refer to the unique pointer or its contents and another solution is passing the row pointer by using get uh, which is a member function of unique pointer and uh, it's fine uh, because uh, we aren't messing with the ownership but the intent is not uh, shown correctly here because we don't know where this resource came from so uh, these two uh, solutions are fine I personally prefer this one because it's uh, clearer and uh, helps me understand what's going on in the code remember that uh, we are this example we are trying to pass a, a reference or a pointer to the contents of something owned by unique pointer without changing the ownership so we want to maintain the ownership to rest pointer here's another example this is a completely different situation we want to actually transfer ownership from a smart pointer to another after we acquire a resource so like we did in the uh, in the previous example we allocate a resource and we store it in a unique pointer so this rest pointer is now the owner of the resource and uh, here uh, if you remember std unique pointer cannot be copied but it can be moved basically when i talk about moving an object i'm referring to move semantics which is a new feature introduced in c11 that basically allows library developers to write efficient assignment or constructions that avoid copies that may be expensive or maybe like in the unique pointer case we can have a different meaning between copying and moving so where copying it would make no sense because we would have uh, two unique pointers that uh, own the same object moving makes sense because we can basically uh, tell to move the ownership of a single resource from a smart pointer to another move semantics are a very big topic and uh, it's they are they might be very difficult to understand uh, because they have uh, deep implications in the code you write but for example uh, if you if i create a string called source and uh, i create another string called target and uh, i move using std move source into target basically we probably avoided a possibly expensive copy by uh, moving the contents of source into target and now source is in an in, in undefined state basically ripped uh, the contents of source and put them into target so using source after moving from it could result in errors or uh, undefined behaviors because uh, we don't know what state this object is in we basically rip the, its contents out and put them in target to avoid a, a possible expensive copy as you can see to move an object we use the std move function that takes a single argument which is the object we want to move and uh, in the case of smart pointers uh, uh, sorry in the case of unique pointers std move helps us uh, transfer ownership be because it explicitly expresses the intent of moving ownership so if we get uh, uh, the rest pointer instance of unique pointer to resource that was owning the resource and we move it inside the new owner basically what we are doing is transferring the ownership from rest pointer to new owner and the rest pointer will now will now not own anymore the resource and the new owner will be new owner so after moving res pointer, using res pointer might result in unexpected results unless you obviously um, use it to uh, take ownership of something else uh, and the new owner is now the only owner of the resource and uh, you should continue using it instead of res pointer 
So when the uh, new owner goes out of scope, you will be sure that the memory is freed and uh, that's the guarantee that the unique pointer gives us. And uh, you also need to remember that rest pointer does not own the resource anymore, so you shouldn't use it unless you use it to uh, to take ownership of uh, some other resource from another unique pointer. So you shouldn't try to transfer ownership uh, uh, very often because uh, most of the times you just want to refer to something without uh, transferring ownership. So basically try to simply refer to the contents of a smart pointer using the const reference uh, or the row pointer uh, parameters like we did uh, in these two functions. You should use stdmove only when you need to uh, change ownership. Uh, another thing to notice is that we can use stdmove to make uh, uh, to call pass by value with the new owner and this, per this is perfectly vali valid because we pass the ownership from new owner to mr mrs pointer here which is a copy of the original unique pointer and uh, by passing ownership we can be sure that uh, the new owner of the resource will become the parameter in the function and at the, uh, at the end of the function the the memory will be freed so it's perfectly fine to call stdmove and uh, copy the unique pointer into a function so in the next code segment we'll take a look at another kind of ownership which is shared ownership Let's say we need to, to create uh, a class for a game effect that has an animation, a background texture, a particle texture and the sound. And uh, this is a naive implementation because uh, as you can see we are storing resources directly. So if we move this, uh, this naive game effect around by copying it, uh, we will have to copy the animation and the textures and the sound which would be extremely expensive. So there are many solutions to this uh, situation. Basically, we could have a resource manager class that uh, stores expensive resources by using a CD unique pointer, and uh, then uh, other objects such as the game effect refer to those resources by using pointers or references. And this basically is a good solution because resource manager uh, is the unique owner of the resources and all the game objects only simply refer to those resources or we could use a shared ownership that basically means that the game effects own the resource in a shared manner so that the resources are freed only when there are no more game effects using them and this is where std shared pointer comes into play which is the another kind of smart pointer so here, here I created a class called game effect that st stores four shared pointers to resources. And uh, as we did uh, in the naive game effect, we have an animation, two textures and a sound. And this kind of design basically says this, that while there is a, at least a game effect uh, class alive, there will be at least a shared pointer alive and memory of the resource will be allocated. So as long as uh, there is an instance of game effect alive, we can be sure that the memory for the animation, the textures and the sound are allocated. Also, if there are more game effect instances alive, shared pointer will keep track of the number of instances so that uh, when the number of instances becomes zero, it will free the memory. And uh, that's the last point of our list. Basically, if there are zero instances of game effect alive, shared pointer will detect that and uh, will it will automatically delete the memory and uh, free the memory for the allocated resources. So this is very useful when uh, you you have uh, resources that that are not used in uh, in every level or by every game effect so that uh, they will be automatically allocated and allocated only when needed and uh, if they need to be shared there will there will not be additional allocations or deallocation which may slow down the game so let's see an example of using shared pointer here i created another class that i call texture resource and uh, it has a constructor and a destructor that print sitor and detour so that uh, that we can see when the resource is constructed or destructed. Also, we can uh, we cannot copy this uh, this resource because I used the new C++ eleven syntax uh, uh, equals delete that basically tells that uh, the copy constructor and the copy assignment operator are deleted and they cannot be used. 
using the equals delete syntax is a very useful feature to prevent uh, uh, unnecessary copies uh, or to prevent copies uh, in classes like re text resource that uh, may be very expensive to copy. So let's start by acquiring a resource by creating a shared pointer to text resource called source and uh, initializing it with a new text resource. So basically what happens here is that we allocate the memory for the resource Share the pointer takes uh, shared ownership of the resource uh, and its internal ownership counter goes up and becomes one because there is one instance of shared pointer pointing to our resource. So here's an example of a class that uses share ownership internally like game effect uh, that we seen earlier. And basically this is a textured object class uh, and it holds a shared pointer to a textured resource. So if we open a new scope here and we instantiate a textured object with name TO1 and we set its texture to the shared pointer without using a CD move. With this uh, instruction, we say that uh, the texture of TO1, which is a textured object, will become source. Here, what we're doing is basically uh, taking ownership of uh, the resource stored by source and uh, this kind of ownership is shared, so the, the internal ownership counter goes up and it becomes two because we have uh, an owner here and an owner here. So as you can see, short pointer is keeping track of the owners and uh, now it, it knows that we have two owners. So when we go out of scope, texture object will be destroyed. I mean, TO1 will be destroyed and uh, by destroying it, uh, the shard pointer will be destroyed as well and it will lose ownership of the resource so the counter will go down by one and it will go back to one and uh, if we run the code we will see that uh, ttor was not printed uh, and neither ctor because we were simply uh, taking a shared ownership of the texture and not allocating a new texture or destroying the existing texture so basically here the ownership counter is one here the ownership counter is two and here is back to one because we went out of scope and uh, the shared pointer was destroyed if you remember as long as the internal counter is greater than zero the resource will be kept alive and the memory won't be deallocated so we can still uh, use the texture with uh, many more objects for example here we are constructing and destroying the texture objects but not the texture resource because there is only a texture resource that is being shared uh, by all of these objects we can also release ownership by using reset on a shared pointer so if for example we we share ownership with another owner here and the counter will be two here and we reset source basically source will lose ownership of the texture and uh, here we will have a single owner which is new owner we can also pass the shared pointer by value if we want to increment the internal counter by sharing ownership or by const reference if we simply want to refer to the contents of the share pointer and we can also get uh, a row pointer to the contents like we did for unique pointer here are some examples I didn't implement but I will explain them so if we pass by value the share pointer it's totally fine the counter will increase by one year and uh, unless the function does something with the share pointer it will de decrease by one year we can also pass it by const reference as I said earlier because uh, uh, we can simply refer to the contents of the shared pointer and the ownership pointer won't change, it will stay the same. So as you can see, we managed to instantiate a single texture object and uh, we managed to avoid copying a very expensive resource. And if we run the code, we can see that CTOR and DTOR were printed only once. So we are sure that uh, the resource was allocated and deallocated only once. Uh, sharp pointer is very useful, but you you should make uh, you should uh, you shouldn't abuse it because uh, it has a significant runtime overhead, unlike a unique pointer. 
So if you don't need the shard ownership, you should use unique pointers. Otherwise, uh, using shard pointer is a very good idea. Just remember to not abuse it because uh, it may slow down your program. So in this video, we learned that smart pointers are incredibly powerful, uh, but they have much, much more to offer. I suggest using the cppreference.com website, which is a fantastic website, to learn more about the, the, sh the smart pointers. And uh, here are the links for unique pointer and share pointer. And also, never forget that raw pointers and references are the best solution when you don't need to own an object. So don't abuse smart pointers, especially short pointers. So, uh, in the end, make sure to avoid using the delete and the new keywords without using smart pointers, because smart pointers improve greatly the safety and readability of your program. And again, I suggest uh, looking around on the internet for more information on, the, on smart pointers, since they are a very broad topic and there are many, many implications of using them in your code. But uh, I, I strongly suggest you avoid using uh, new and delete keywords uh, with C++ 11 when you can use uh, smart pointers. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you found the tutorial int interesting. It was uh, a little more difficult than the previous tutorials, so feel free to uh, contact me directly or post a comment and I will try to clarify your doubts.